Welcome to a lesson on factoring a sum or difference of cubes. In order to factor a sum or difference of cubes, we do have to memorize the formulas shown below. The method of factoring a sum or difference of cubes is not intuitive like many of the other factoring techniques. So the first thing to recognize here is that whether we have a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes, both forms are factorable, which is not the case when we have squares. Remember, a squared plus b squared does not factor and is considered prime, and a difference of squares does factor. The next thing to recognize is the pattern of the signs or the pattern of addition and subtraction. If we have a cubed plus b cubed, the binomial is a plus b, and the trinomial is a squared minus ab plus b squared. So if we have a sum of cubes, the pattern is plus minus plus. And if we have a cubed minus b cubed, the binomial is a minus b, and the trinomial is a squared plus ab plus b squared. So if we have a difference of cubes, the pattern is minus plus plus. Now before we apply these formulas, let's verify the products on the right give us a sum or difference of cubes. So let's first check the formula for a cubed plus b cubed by determining the product on the right. When multiplying a binomial and a trinomial, we have six products. We first distribute a, which gives us three products, and then we distribute b, which gives us three more products. Distributing a, we have a cubed minus a squared b, and then plus a b squared, which gives us these first three terms. And now distributing b, we have plus a squared b, and then minus a b squared, and finally plus b cubed. And now simplifying, we have, now simplifying, negative a squared b plus a squared b is zero, and a b squared minus a b squared is zero, leaving us with a cubed plus b cubed, verifying the formula works. And now I'll check the formula for a cubed minus b cubed by determining the product on the right. And again, we have six products. We distribute a, which gives us three products. And then we distribute negative b, which gives us three more products. Distributing a, we have a cubed plus a squared b plus a b squared. Distributing negative b gives us minus a squared b minus a b squared and then minus b cubed. And again, simplifying a squared b minus a squared b is zero and a b squared minus a b squared is zero, giving us a product of a cubed minus b cubed, verifying the factoring formula. And now let's take a look at some examples. We want to factor x cubed minus 27. x to the third power is a perfect cube, and so is 27, because three cubed is 27. So if it's helpful, so if it's helpful, we can rewrite this as the cube of x minus the cube of three. Writing it in this form should help us recognize for our formula, we have a equals x and b equals three. And therefore, x cubed minus 27 will factor into a binomial times a trinomial. Applying the formula for a difference of cubes, the first binomial factor is a minus b, which is x minus three. And then for the trinomial, we have a squared. If a is x, a squared is x squared. And then we have plus a times b, which gives us x times three, which is three x. So we have plus three x. And then we have plus b squared, if b is three, b squared is three squared, which is equal to nine, giving us plus nine. And now we have x cubed minus 27 in factored form. And if we wanted to, we could multiply this out to check. Next, we have five x cubed plus 625. Now, at first, you might be thinking, this doesn't factor because five x cubed is not a perfect cube. But remember, the first step in factoring is always to factor out the greatest common factor. Here the greatest common factor is five. So we begin by factoring out five from both terms, which gives us five times the quantity x cubed. If we factor out five from 625, 
we get 125. Again, 125 times 5 is equal to 625. Notice now x cubed plus 125 is a sum of cubes. And again, if it's helpful, we can rewrite this as 5 and then times the quantity the cube of x plus the cube of 5. This should help us recognize that for our formula for the sum of cubes, a is equal to x and b is equal to 5. But it is important to remember this factor 5 must be in the final factored form. So we have 5x cubed plus 625 is equal to 5. And then applying the sum of cubes factoring formula, we will have a binomial factor and a trinomial factor. Where the binomial factor is a plus b, which gives us x plus 5. And then for the trinomial, we have a squared. If a is x, a squared is x squared. And then we have minus a times b, which gives us minus x times 5, or minus 5x. And then plus b squared. If b is 5, b squared is 5 squared, which is 25. So when applying the summer difference of cubes factoring formulas, don't forget to factor out the greatest common factor. So let's take a look at one more example. Here we have 8x cubed minus 64. This is another one where we have to be careful. 8x cubed is a perfect cube because it's equal to the cube of 2x, and so is 64 because 64 is equal to the cube of 4. But again, the first step here needs to be to factor out the greatest common factor of 8. 8x cubed minus 64 is equal to 8 times the quantity x cubed minus 8. And now notice in the parentheses, 8x cubed minus 8 is still a perfect cube, so now we can factor further applying the difference of cubes formula as shown below. And again, if it's helpful, we can rewrite this as 8 times the quantity the cube of x minus the cube of 2, because 2 cubed is equal to 8. In this form, it's easier to recognize for the factoring formula, a is equal to x and b is equal to 2. So now we have 8x cubed minus 64 is equal to 8 times a binomial factor times a trinomial factor. Where well, the binomial factor is a minus b, which is x minus 2. The trinomial factor is a squared, which is x squared, and then plus a times b, which gives us plus x times 2, or plus 2x. And then finally, plus b squared, if b is 2, b squared is 2 squared, which is 4. And now we have the expression factored completely. I hope you found this helpful.